Welcome back to Sam's Watch Review. One day, 3D printing could be as common as a paper printer. And yes, this bracelet that you see in this video is a fun DIY project that I designed and made with a 3D printer. And now it is installed on a G-Shock DW9052. Here's a close-up view of the links, which some of you might find not as attractive as a factory product since it's made through 3D printing, not plastic molding. Anyway, one of the challenges was how to make the links adjustable. Most designs on the internet have fixed length and are adjusted from the design file, which is not something that we as watch users commonly do. So for this design, I'm using spring bars to connect between the links so that it's easy for users to just add or remove links to adjust the length. Another challenge was a buckle joint mechanism. How to create a buckle mechanism that can be made with 3D printing and be easy to lock and unlock. I came up with the idea of an S-shaped hook that holds onto each other and is secured with a lever. And here is how it looks on the wrist. The links are still too long since I designed them for about 10mm each. So now, in this video I will share the process of making this design better by shortening them to 8mm. And here's the design on DesignSpark Mechanical, the software that I'm using. And here's the link. Now, I have cut and shortened it by 2mm to get an 8mm sling. As you can see here, it's already different from the previous version. Next is the second link from the interface link, which functions as a transition from outer lock to the strap width. Here, I also cut 2mm so that the second link is also 8mm in length. And this is the complete set of the bracelet. We will export them one by one to become STL files so that we can slice and print. Next is the slicing process. And I want to put all the STL designs in a single printing process. Here I print a pair of interface links, a pair of second links, and about 10 of the common links or more for larger wrist sizes along with the buckle set. For this print, I'm using black PLA plus, and since the spool is out, I refill the spool first, and this is also a chance to show what the material of 3D printer looks like. And here's the printing process. And here are the results. The next process is finishing. It starts with sanding to get a smooth surface before painting. And here I'm using two grids of sandpaper, 200 and 600. The 200 will remove the material faster and the 600 will smooth it out. Frankly, finishing is the most labor intensive part of all. So let's not forget about coffee time. And then it's time for sanding, use the 200 grit sandpaper, and then switch to the smoother 600. Time to clean up the sanding result. And now painting and to speed things up, I will spare you the details. Okay, here are the watch and the previous prototype. And here are the updated interface links, transition links, buckle set, and the common links. Time to assemble with 16mm spring bars. 
It's simple, just use the spring bar as you would when installing a strap or bracelet onto a watch lock. And lastly, install the buckle set. Now assembling for the other side. And here's a close-up look at the link connections. Here's also a close-up look at the buckle mechanism. Install the lever holder first. And here's how the buckle works. Now install it on the watch, also using 16mm spring bar. And here's the comparison with the previous prototype. The latest one looks better with shorter links. Now let's put it on. It's easy and it holds nicely. And as you can see here, it's sure not as smooth as Casio's or third party product, and that's to be expected. Here's how it looks on the wrist. If you're interested in making one, be sure to check out the link to the design file in the description. And that's all for now. Thank you for watching, hopefully this video can give you a glimpse of what 3D printing can achieve at this point. Have a great day and see you again in the next video.